ATI Podcast, Barry here and Josh on site at Terror Tacos, and we're both with Bradley and Brian. How are you gentlemen doing today? Great. Awesome. We appreciate you guys doing the podcast. and uh, Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Really appreciate it. Where are we typically here? Oh yeah, absolutely. And you guys have a beautiful business here in a great location. And, you know, something that drew me to you guys initially, obviously, was kind of the idea behind the business, or at least, you know, kind of what the visual aesthetic is. And secondarily, the fact that it's a vegan, vegetarian uh, restaurant, and that menu is, you know, comprised of those types of items. Uh, I personally was a vegan and vegetarian for quite some time. I was vegetarian for about seven years, vegan for about eight months. Um, so, you know, I kind of know what the fare tastes like. I know that there's food out there that's just as good as you know anything that you're going to get as a meat eater and that sort of thing. So, I was open to trying it, and we recently did an event that you guys were at, which was the Punk Rock Flea Market. So we were able to uh, take advantage of some of those tacos that you guys had available there. Absolutely, Cowboy yeah. from Hell was delicious. And, That's uh, a favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that one for sure. Uh, I know I got one with Beer Day on it also that I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, yeah. I wanted to kind of mix it up, try some different stuff on the palate. And I'm always pretty adventurous. I'll try anything once. And I won't want to say pleasantly surprised because I already expected it to be good. Uh, but it was awesome. Yeah, great you food. Know, and yeah. it hit the spot because, you know, you're out there all day long. We were kind of yeah. drinking. In the heat. Of and it. Drinking. The heat. Yeah. <laughs> it was exactly what I needed. Kind of like that nutrition oasis. This is a reset halfway through the day. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Parked this right up. So, so uh, I guess maybe in kind of some of the first times that I had noticed your guys' work uh, in particular, I think you guys kind of started around the pandemic or post pandemic. Is that right? In the pandemic. Yeah. Right in the middle. It was still locked down when we were doing all this. Wow. Yeah, you uh, got to have quite the set of balls on you to start something at that time, right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Stupidity depends on what day you worked out. <laughs> Could have gone either way. Uh, I, I think it was like more of a benefit, honestly. Yeah. You know, it scared a lot of people, but, you know, as far as like opening a restaurant and then we could open up in a takeout only model, right. which was. Yeah. A lot less, simplified. you know, simplified, less intimidating. Right. Uh, we knew that we could, you know, accomplish a good menu and, and tasty food. Um, and then, you know, we, we started this place with not a whole lot of money. So it was, um, um, you know, we don't have to have a full dining room all decked right. out and crazy. Right. Um, you know, Brian still has a very demanding full-time job. So even just getting this place ready was a ton of work. But Yeah. Less so if we would have been helping out. No, for we sure. Can. Yeah, and uh, I remember right after we opened, we were only, just only a couple months later, suddenly city and county started to lift the ordinance, yes. like, you know, with the restrictions, and it's like, shit, we gotta get people in here now. And yeah. Like, so it, it really kind of, you know, this, I thought the timing was really, really good because yeah. we were able to, you know, our, our mission, our vision of this place is more than just a restaurant. Like, is we wanted to have this crazy place that was an experience for people that don't get to do these, you know, don't don't get to sit in a horror themed restaurant. Anymore. Right, right. So, you know, the fact that we were able to move into it at a good pace and uh, you know, suddenly, you know, when people started coming in, we were able to like really work on those things too. So I thought ultimately the pandemic kind of helped my crowd of saying it laid the groundwork. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, any business, anybody that knows somewhat about businesses, you know, you kind of always go in with that soft opening mindset and then you kind of have your grand opening. And I think kind of like with those restrictions that you guys are talking about that you guys had to face right out the gate, it kind of allowed you to have that experience, but maybe a little bit more prolonged than yeah. some others, perhaps. Uh, but 
it, it helps you guys you know, level up when the time was right and you guys were prepared to do it too. So uh, it sounds like things worked out. I mean, made the best of a bad situation, right? Right. <laughs> so something that, of course, attracts me in particular and people that listen to our podcast routinely knows we're big fans of horror movies. You got the horror theme here, too. Uh, I mean, I guess just right out the gate, you guys had a checklist of things that you wanted to do, and the horror theme was definitely on that checklist. Let's talk about the other thing. Sure. Yeah, we, we knew we wanted to open a taco place, but, you know, I... I was already working at another restaurant, uh, but I, you know, I wanted to be in a place that was me, like 100%, you know, and not just that, like, you know, we wanted a unique experience, you know, it's, you know, you can sell food all day long, but if you don't offer something that's going to be memorable, um, and that was, that was just like part of what we wanted to do, let's, let's go all out. I mean, we grow, you know, we grew up, us and our other brother watching horror movies, I'm like, I got young kids now, and I'm thinking like I can't believe I was watching what I was watching. Yeah, when I was like, like first and second grade, and now Big it's thing. like you know my kids are like, oh my god, you know I can't believe you watch this stuff. But you know it's it's yeah. how we grew up, right? It's just like, we used to when we were kids, the three of us like uh, we would make these tents like a lot of you know kids did. We'd build these huge forts in the living room. Um, and we would, you know, put the TV in there with the, the old, you know, tube TV in there. We watched late night Twilight Zones. Like that was, that was where we started was the three of us watching Twilight Zone movies and Jaws, you know? And so yeah. that's, that's where we came from. And it's kind of built into all the other stuff. So of course, like when we were doing this, we're like, let's just keep it simple. Like, let's not, let's not invent something. Let's just keep it who we are. We like horror movies and we love death metal. Yeah. All right. And we love tacos. Yeah. So that we didn't go outside of any comfort zone. It was just like, let's focus. Those yeah. three things right there. And, and that's so it really, it's like easy. Like when you approach it from that regard, I mean, none of this is even, you know, like, sure. Sure. We well, weren't trying to concoct some, some cool, you know, concept right. out of blue. Like we just stuck to who we are. And, so. and it makes it easy too, because those are the things that you're passionate about. So right. Yeah. It into the business too. And, there's a lot of fun things that you can do and you guys are doing, uh, like, you know, naming menu items and outside of just the decor piece of it. Uh, after, you know, all the theme stuff, you know, I know you guys have menu items like named the Ripley, uh, you know, coming from Alien, the movie, one of my favorite franchises. Uh, I know that you guys also, too, and I want to pivot that into this, you guys show a lot of local love and use, you know, local uh, ingredients in some of your stuff. Like, in particular, you guys had a burrito with, like, Red Hot Riblets in it as well. Um, That's the Ripley. So, yeah, <laughs> so you guys are not only playing on that piece of it, but I like the collaboration piece, too, uh, infusing, like, you know, other local uh, artists or food establishments, ingredients, so on and so forth. Would you guys say that comes from a desire, like, maybe in your music history, uh, as far as the collaboration piece, or is that something you guys at the gate always wanted to do, or is that an opportunity that developed later? I think so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we um, we we definitely we have some connections in St. Louis. We have a lot of friends here. We're not neither one of us are from here, but we I think we both agree that when when I moved here in the early night or the mid nineties ish, I remember thinking there's so many cool restaurants here. And, yeah, you know, living in California and Colorado, there were cool spots there too. But there was just something weird and unique about St. Louis for some reason. I thought the food scene. Yeah. So we wanted to be a part of that, like you know, with this and have something that we could collaborate with others with and you know i there's a lot to work with in st louis when it comes to food you know right it's also a lot of kind of pressure because right there's so much good food here right so yeah this street alone is so multicultural right. you know a lot what of i mean really so. great restaurants you know so right. yeah. yeah you guys definitely stand out in that scene as well in particular you know it's one thing to be a vegetarian restaurant but again back to the you know theme of the restaurant and what you're doing and infusing music and art here too, you know, it, it definitely gives an entirely different experience, and you guys are also selling an experience just beyond the food too, right. for sure. Uh, so I think that that's what's definitely going to attract people to your business. I know it attracted me to your guys' business. And back to the musical piece, talk about the love of death metal. Got some heavy music playing in the background. I got to ask you guys. Uh, you talked a little bit about some of your musical experience. Let's talk about some of the musical experiences you've had in the past, and some of the music that you guys have played, because I think that. As uh, kind of you know, infused in the business too, and the love for heavy music. So, how about yourself? Uh, a lot of different bands. <laughs> yeah. I we 
we played in a few bands uh, together. You know, he he got me into the hardcore scene, metal scene when I was pretty young. So you know, fifteen years old, starting to play, yeah. play in bands and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I've been in a couple touring bands. Uh, Brian got to fill in for a couple people go on tours. You know, we always did little short weekend trips and stuff. Yeah. Uh, coming here, actually, too. Yeah. Played a few that we played in Hungry Big Crawl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The old Creepy Crawl. Crawl. I've, I've seen, seen some crazy shows at the Creepy oh. Crawl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just talking to somebody else. Just talking to somebody else. Oh, man. Like 1997, yeah. we did. And there was yeah. a flame fire breather on stage. Yeah. And they, yeah. They, the owner was freaking out because he was like, whoosh. Yeah. And everyone was like ducking and there's like <laughs> and it's like that yeah. place is so small, it's like as big as this. You got a fire breather just like whoosh. Yeah. It's insane. It was so much fun. Yeah, our buddy Calvin McRoy, he was at that same show. We were just talking to him about that. He was in uh, Not Waving but Drowning, which is an awesome band yeah. from this yeah. area. Yeah. And um it's so it, it it had us, you know, reminiscing about the old days at the creepy crawl, you know, just yeah. the legendary venue, unfortunately gone too yeah. soon for sure. But yeah. people still talk about it for the short period that it was here, you know. Yeah. There's so many good stories, so many good bands came through there in such a concentrated amount of time. So many good bands there. Yeah. It's awesome. So what was your instrument or area of focus? I'm a guitar player. Okay. He's a vocalist. Vocalist, okay. Nice. This is cool. Yeah. So uh, vocal approaches in the heavy music scene, you know, there's kind of uh, multiple ways you can go about it, of course. Uh, would you lend yourself the... the Call your expertise maybe more on the screaming side of things? Do you do a little bit of singing? You can some oh, of the yelling? On the screaming. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The dirtier, dirtier and more horrible sounding, you know, the better. That's yeah. The best, yeah. The, you know. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of people think they can do vocals, uh, but I'm going to tell you what, it's, it's, it's a difficult task, especially in a heavy band. Uh, I know, like, some people are dismissive of heavy music in general, and... Uh, I always have those exceptions to the rules queued up for people to, to play for them. And, uh, you know, uh, I grew up personally in kind of like a little sheltered environment until I was a teenager and started making some of my own musical explorations and started kind of opening myself up to other types of music. And at first, I had kind of that mind frame. I was like, oh, I scream. I can't really understand what he's saying. But, <laughs> I mean, if you re- if you pay attention, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. A, just another instrument. Yeah, absolutely. Look at it like as a, it's, absolutely. Not, it's not like a normal vocalist for like a pop band you're listening to. Exactly. The words and there's all that other stuff, but the words usually suck anyways for a lot of stuff. Right, right. It's like, that's true. There's something good about lyrically about a lot of that, but you yeah. know, metal band, it's like it's another instrument it's for sure, pulling everything together to sound, you know, and like you gotta crazy. match that intensity and aggression right. that comes with that yeah. music too, you know. And it's, uh, I mean, there's people that say mm-hmm. it do well too, you know. I always pull out Greg. Uh, from oh, Dillinger, gosh. you know, One of the best great example. In the business. he can do it all yeah. across the palette. Yeah. You know, he gets it from people like Mike Patton, right? For example, so you know, there's just because somebody's up there screaming doesn't mean that they aren't talented. It's not it's a, the long point. Here. People don't realize how like how many different types of vocal work there is with screaming and like right. you know styles and yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a lot more complex than people. Low think. end of the curve <laughs> right. type stuff, right? There's higher, yeah. there's yeah. lower, yeah. right? It's, you know? it's a lot more complex than people. Think, actually, yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> so kudos to you, yeah, for absolutely, for sure, absolutely. So, uh, the musical piece, of course, is infused in the restaurant here. Uh, when we came in, you guys are playing some good shit already, talking about music first yeah. thing in the morning. Uh, you know, we were talking about the new blood incantation, uh, specifically, and uh, you know, so I just I just love the vibe, can't love the vibe enough, right? Um, we were talking about too about some of the artwork and decor on the walls, I know. Earlier, you had mentioned that you had a friend that did some of the artwork that's surrounding us here today in our conversation, and we'll be posting up some photos. Awesome. Yeah, he's yeah. Phenomenal. So different yeah. scenes from different, yeah, famous horror movies in particular, um, but it's kind of all across the palette. We've got animation, um, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, but then we've got things like Ghostbusters, Scream, Halloween, some of the old classic staples, Labyrinth, so on and so forth. Um, man, just awesome, awesome artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so he goes by Art by Ty. Is on, he's on Instagram. All these are for sale, by the way. Um, okay. So um, he's he's a good friend. Uh, has a studio uh, and a gallery in Hannibal, Missouri. Um, cool. And he travels all over the country doing art shows. Um, he's a very good dude. So check check his Instagram out uh, if you want to buy one of these awesome uh, scrolls. Very sale. 
Yeah, these things are incredible, guys. So we'll definitely make sure to take some pictures and post them. <laughs> for sure. Because they're incredible, yeah. And then just outside of the space that we're in right now, you know, as you go back to the bar, you see some other artwork and things. But one thing I wanted to point out is the fact that you guys are playing movies up at the bar, but not in the traditional sense with the audio piped in over everybody, bleeding everything out. You got the music piece, like we said. Uh, but, you know, you got some classics going around in the back, background, kind of silent movie approach. Not that the one we're watching right now is a silent movie, but uh, <laughs> that's another cool just kind of, again, it just it's adding layers and enhancing the atmosphere that you guys got going on here. That's really cool as well. It's, uh, again, an easy solution to the concept, right? <laughs> like, yeah. right. All right, well, let's just play horror movies. That's what's going to play all day, you know? Like, so I, I, that's one of our favorite things about this. When we put the TV up, we were a little bit worried. Like, want a TV in here where, you know, like where there's stuff playing, but people love the TV. And we, a lot of Instagram posts, people, you know, do like video of like a movie playing. Like, oh my God, they have Lost Boys playing in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the biggest problem. The nostalgia factor. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like on a personal level for me, just, you know, super important. Yeah. If you can walk into somewhere, and, you know, it doesn't matter where it is, but if you can walk into a space and, like, instantly get hit with a dose of nostalgia, yeah. you know, it's, it's already become a place worth going. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, I mean, outside of just baiting customers, you're not, it's not a gimmick in the sense that right. they're just going to come in here one right. time. Right. Right. You know, you're going to get long-term customers maybe hitting on those nostalgic notes. I know it's hitting for me, for sure. You guys you know, get back to that nostalgic piece, too, and hammer down on that a little bit more. I mean, you're talking about growing up and watching horror movies at an age that you shouldn't have been watching those horror movies, right? Like, I remember some of the first movies that I actually remember seeing was things like Child's Play, Gremlins, you know, things like that as a kid. My dad was a huge horror movie buff. It was right in the middle of the VHS boom, you know, in the mid '80s, and things got more affordable, and people were renting stuff, and then right. they had the double tape decks, and they're ripping right. stuff, you know. So yeah. we had a wall of VHS play oh, yeah. you know, movies that my dad was ripping off of uh, Blockbuster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you did, you know. But uh, it's yeah. not a victimless crime. Yeah, right. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah, right, right, right. Those PSAs, and yeah. those warnings. Yeah, I was probably like. Probably five at the time that all this was going on. You know, I certainly shouldn't have seen Child's Play at five years old. Right. Probably, you know, and uh, I, I, I got to catch myself too sometimes with my own kids now. And, you know, we're watching something that's kind of like gratuitous violence, like John Wick or whatever. And my son walks in and he's just like fascinated with guns, which we're not like really gun people or anything. So I think that's probably why, because he never sees them, right? Yeah. So right. he's just like sees it on the TV. He's like, what's that? You know, <laughs> and you can just see him zoning in like a bug. You know, into the light, and he's about to get zapped. You know, for real. So it's, it's a little boy thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We have John Wick now. When we were kids. RoboCop was the big thing. Oh he's yeah, yeah. Over the top, like definitely violence. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, Has John Wick ever shot another dude's dick? On <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair point. <laughs> Although he probably has. Probably he just didn't, they didn't make it a big deal. Yeah, like, so much shit was going on from A to Z. You know, it was just like in the moment of everything else that was going on. Actually, I'm pretty sure he probably has. So, uh, I'm not sure. But with that bullet spray, how can you not, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, RoboCop was definitely a huge one for me, too, growing up. Uh, and what's funny about that is, you know, I think when you're watching a kid, too, like, well, obviously, not everything lands with you, right? Right. Like, the severity of the things that you're seeing sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's, like that with music, too, because I remember, like, listening to stuff when I was younger and not really taking in the context of it. Now sure. that I'm adult re-listening to it, I'm like, man, I cannot believe they played this on the radio for one, right. for two my parents let me listen yeah. to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Well, yeah, it's like, uh, kind of like, I've, I've heard this analogy years before. It's kind of like the brown sugar Rolling Stones thing. Right. Know? It's like, yeah. oh, they're talking about, you know, like doing heroin and shit, like drugs, you know? Right. Yeah. You know, like people aren't, man, you when you're a kid, you don't think, oh, yeah. Yeah, you, don't, you don't make that connection. Right, right, right. right. It's the innocence of like brown right? sugar. Yeah, <laughs> I love brown sugar. I like I thought it was super mint. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, I got to ask you guys while we're on the topics of movies and stuff. I know we've talked about some nostalgic ones of the past, but you know, being horror movie fans, let's talk about some classics. What are some, we'll say, comfort movies for you in the horror realm? I'll start with you. Uh, the Alien franchise, just oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, when when you mix horror and sci-fi, like it's already that vein right there. Is, yes, it's it's my go-to. So 
Yeah, and it's pretty deep, man. It gets on like the origins of mankind oh, yeah. and stuff. So I mean, I even like the bad alien movies. Right, right. Really entertaining. Right. There's not, there's not a single one I did that didn't entertain me. Or, right. You know, I know a lot, a lot of the newer ones have complained about. Right. Did you watch the old ones? Right. Yeah. 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 Bill Paxton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such cheese. Yeah. That's, that's what made them right. amazing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. How about for yourself? Uh, I mean, every time I get asked this question, I give some different answer. It's just been I, I'm, I, I would say that honestly, when you talk about nostalgic horror movies, and what did you mention? You said uh, you just like a comfort movie. Yeah, whatever. yeah. It's it's probably Jaws, and it's actually the worst Jaws. I I think Jaws three is the best Jaws of all of them. <laughs> That's because it is the worst. I, I just <laughs> love it. It's so campy and You're ridiculous. Right. I, yeah. It's my favorite challenge. And people are going to beat my ass for that one. I just love it. Every time I watch it, I'm like, oh my God, it's so goofy. Um, when he blows up at the end and right. you know, uh, the whole window coming through the <laughs> crash and underneath, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> like slowly with his teeth showing, you know, and yeah. the whole thing is so dumb. Uh, I love that. And I, again, Alien, uh, another one that I can just watch it inside. Um, everybody, everybody continues. I'm a big brain scan fan from, uh, okay. you know, from the nineties. I love that movie a lot. I watched that probably maybe once every couple months for fun. But anyways, yeah. Very cool. What's, uh, some more modern horror movies that really hooked you guys that you guys are big fans of, or maybe it's a particular director, you know, if they come out with a movie, you got to see it. What's something for you? Oh, man. So, Hereditary, oh, yeah. for me, was... I just, I don't know, I, I smiled through, like, most of that movie. So it's just, I don't know if that's, like, a, I need to go get checked out. You need therapy? Yeah, yeah. No, I just, <laughs> like, the, the end, you know, I don't know, it's going to be kind of spoiler. Well, like, the ending It's been out for that, six years, it's your fault. It was yeah. just, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, like, it's this unsettling feeling right. that leads up to this, like, five minutes of really, like, what the fuck just happened? And then... It's just this bizarre, yeah. weird, almost like happy ending. And it's just, right. you know, I, I love when a movie can do that. It can confuse like, you. Yeah, yeah, confuse you, and you're just, you're like, I, I'm smiling, and I don't understand why. <laughs> right. Like, I just, so for me, you know, definitely one of the, the newer ones that really left it. Quick confession, I almost wore my hereditary shirt. So this is, you know, my rocking cotton one that I got. My wife picked nice. it up for me. It's like, ah, I'll be a little too hot. That's not thin enough, you know? Yeah. So funny that you bring that up. Well, he, I mean, the director, like Midsummer, I think, yeah. is one of the most fun movies I've seen I agree. here. I loved that movie. Yes. And I know that movie gets some weird hate. That. I don't get it. It's yeah. a great movie. Um, I also, uh, I love what they're doing with the new, with the Predator franchise. Yes. So like the, the Hulu Predator and then right. it, oh, pretty yeah, really it's fucking great movie. I'm so fun. Didn't you? You were telling me didn't they shoot it in Comanche? Yes. And there actually is so, an edit where you can watch it where it's all Comanche. Yeah. No way. And yeah. I really yeah. want to see that. Well, the yeah. problem is on Hulu by default they play the English one. Yeah. Right. You had to know going, which I had read plenty about it going in that I knew it was a Comanche. So I just went. I'm always messing with like. I always have to have the subtitles on with kids because like run the right. I do the same thing on Netflix. You know? Yeah. So I always have the subtitles on. So. I'm always going through that anyways, and I saw, okay, yeah, the Comanches on there, I put it on there on purpose, you know, yeah. like, I'm a guy who, that's you watch anime, time. or, like, I'm big into South Korean movies, like, I I gotta hear the original dialect, yeah. because the inflection and the matches, the actions oh, yeah. there, right, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, I, South Korean, the, the whole okay. film industry there, I think, is just... Like really putting pressure on everyone else. Like what they're putting out yeah. across the board. There's science fiction, just like visually, yeah. story wise. I'm like, movie? man, they are. Do you remember that movie? What it was called? We we were on tour. That was one where I auditioned. Was that the kiki 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 oh, yeah. with, yeah. with the long with the long needle? Yeah, the audition's <laughs> awesome. Same that one. I checked out. That's amazing. Marshad was one of my favorite directors in general too. I mean, not that one's this, but yeah. uh, Takanishi Mike, another great director. Well, he's kind of, he's Japanese actually. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I was a big fan, like kind of where I started with all that myself was like the Ring franchise, the original. Yeah. Ring right. Right. And, you know, so I knew that they were like remaking those. Uh, 
you know, they did that with a couple other franchises as well. Um, and then, you know, there's also a cool, like, niche of, like, Mexican horror also, too. So, like, the Wreck movies, I love all those, even the ones that people don't like. Like, Wreck 3 is kind of over the top. It gets out of that first-person point of view. Yeah. Uh, and, um, like, a lot of people don't care for that one. And, like, the fourth one's kind of even more bad shit crazy. They're, like, on a ship. Well, I don't know if you've seen any of the Wreck movies. Yeah. Oh, man, they're incredible. Like, yeah, I highly recommend those. Uh, but they also, like, went, did American versions of that, like, uh, what was it? Um, not Pulse, but it's, it's something similar to that, where they just ripped that off. But, like, when they go Americanized stuff, it's typically not as good. Ring was pretty good. But, uh, you Ring know, they did it. Pretty the, good. But everything after that was a grudge. Right. The grudge. Was, it's like, we, yep. we tried to watch the grudge the other night. I'm like, man, uh, the scary movie franchise just... Ruin this for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they redid it again, like about 10 years ago or so, I want to say. Really? I never watched it because huh. I was like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm uh, kind of jaded the, on that. The visual, like what they did with, you know, like the kind of the twitchy, yes. you know, the chain now, everything is fucking twitchy. They, you yes. know, like every yes. weird entity in the house is all twitchy. And, everything has to be twitchy now and everything has to bend backwards. Right. That's another like, yeah. tire trope that I'm seeing. Like, I don't have a problem with it if it's done well, but, you know, like, you know, back to hereditary, it's some of that crazy body like, stuff that was going on yeah, was like creepy. Yeah, twisting in the... Yeah. yeah. But it's more about, I think a lot of it has to do with they, 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 they leave, they don't leave anything to the imagination anymore. No. You know, right. Everything's right. in full light, you know, right out the gate. More times than not, you see it in trailers anymore. Right. You know, so the, the part of, like, allure of good horror movies is, like, the slow payoff, you know? And not seeing anything to the end because they want to leave, or maybe not even paying it off at all, especially if it's a long lasting franchise. Right. You know, where your imagination runs wild. And I think that's why, going back to your pick earlier, things that Ari Aster's doing, he leaves a lot for interpretation and, uh, you know, your imagination to run wild. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see Bo is Afraid by Chance, his newest movie? That no, I haven't out? seen it yet. With Joaquin yeah. Phoenix? Huh? It's a trip. I'd be curious to hear later. DM me, let me know what you think of it. Because uh, it's not anything like the other two movies, and he's getting some backlash on that, too, but I'll be curious to hear what your guys' opinions are. I wouldn't necessarily call it a horror movie unless, like, constant mania and manic yeah, acts that's what I heard like, about. makes you... Uh, it kind of gave me a panic feeling. Yeah. You know? And uh, getting back to horror in general, people often don't equate horror to... You know, they think of it, it has to be a monster movie or something like that, you know. Art movies are, to me, by definition, are anything that's horrific. Right. Uh, and that's why, you know, things like suspense usually falls under that category right. and so on and so forth. Like a movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, probably Top Ten, Seven. I always get in arguments with people, I'm like, that's a horror movie. Like, oh, yeah. no, it's a it's well, like, it's so good that I don't really ever care to watch it because I know that it's going to hit me hard. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's, right. Which is, means it's really good. Yeah. Like, I... All people are like, man, I should watch this. I don't know if I want to go through what happens. Right. But yeah. it's like, it's just too dark. You it know? sticks yeah. with you. You know exactly <laughs> right. what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's relatively straightforward. You know, there's not, you know, a lot of like literary devices you use or cinematic devices, if you will, on it. You know, it's pretty like what happens, happens. And yeah. it's fucked up. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Oh, so let's get back into the music realm of things. Let's talk. Um, you know, like maybe le legacy bands in the heavy music realm. What are some of your favorites? That's um, a tough one. <laughs> yeah, know, it's, it's like it's always changing. Uh, I hate I hate questions like this. I don't know. Yeah, what you right one. now? What have you been listening to the last? Yeah, let's, let's just do it right now. Then. Yeah, we're right. Yeah. 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 I have Rebel Cop song. Yeah, just, have you guys heard that? I have. Oh I my god. Not, yeah. It's one of the most fun metal songs I've been out in years. I'll definitely check yeah, it out. Yeah, I'm saying listen. Rebel Cop in it. It's fucking awesome. That's good to Samples, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I've been a pretty consistent to Sugar fan for a really long okay. time. They, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Cradle of Filth. And, oh yeah. Um, he then shows, like, I love black metal. Um, you know, I, I like, I like well-produced music, you know, like I'm not the kind of person that's like digging up stuff. It's like, hey, I can do this. It's right. like totally underground. I actually like, the, you know, for whatever it's worth, I like the really well done 
Which I, you know, because I want to hear like all the different things yeah. you can do. You know, like Cradle of Filth, like the, all the yeah. weird shit that they do. Yeah. But, you know, they they have fun with the production. Right. I mean, it's fun. And then you know, getting the sugar. It's like like uh, it's like the go to all yeah. the time. You know, yeah, driving right. in the car, right. listening. You know, by headphones to work, whatever. It's just like. The Shook is a band that, like, you're, you're, you know what you're going to get in, in one side of things, but you're always going to listen for what new polyrhythm crazy thing are they going to do in their music, you know? Right. And so that's, I mean, I, they don't make a bad album. No. Uh, I, don't think they have I think they get dismissed quite a bit. You know, everybody knows they're good musicians, but I think people get a little dismissive because they look at it as a gimmick to and they say, oh, all they do is just, like, crazy time signatures. It's like, no, there's there's more to it than that. Right. Attention. Right. Uh, without question, not, not in my opinion, but uh, I'm a little wild, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm primarily a drummer. I can play all instruments, but uh, you know, I'm always looking for something crazy on the drums and uh, unique drum production too. You know, so that's uh, they kind of fit that bill every time they put out a new album, for sure. So let's lean back into the food a little bit here. More talk a little bit about the menu and, and some of your guys' offerings here. I know when you say. Terra Tacos, it's in the name. Of course, you have tacos, but there's things outside of that kind of late, you know, homages to the traditional Mexican fare. I know you guys do things like burritos and uh, other offerings. I think you guys have like your version of a crunch wrap, right? So let's talk about some of the stuff you guys have on the menu. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really massive menu. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of work to pull off, but I mean, you know, like, we didn't want to be replaced. We just offers a vegan version of something else. We wanted to make stuff that people are just like, what the hell are you doing? You know, like, yeah. like our behemoth talk. You know, just like, how many things can we file on one thing? And it's still, it was maybe a taco, not a taco anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, our burritos, like we have a lot of fun with, with our burritos, just packing all kinds of stuff, or grill, you know, grilling them in. You know, you know what, what can we do? It's super ridiculous, you know. Someone's yeah. reading the ingredients. <laughs> yeah. um, or like the buffalo food, you know, like our buffalo tofu, you know, you're not going to go to a Mexican restaurant and we're going to have like a buffalo option on it. Right. Um, so it's we wanted to keep it open, you know. We do, we don't consider ourselves we're not an authentic Mexican restaurant by any means. Um, we're definitely heavily influenced by sure. those flavors because of where we come from. Um, but we still, you know, like a lot of our specials that we'll do or collabs that we do with other people, you know, like Indian or Asian type food. Yeah, it's like a cool fusion. There's there's a lot you can do. Like yeah, for sure. I think, you know, again, when people say taco, they just kind of mind goes to like traditional fare. You know, you got ground beef, you might have some lettuce, sour cream in there. Uh, that's pretty much the extent of the cheese, you know, and that people think that that's just a taco. You know, once you get a taco, bro, in the case, you know, back to that bad example. But, um, but I noticed what you guys are doing just outside of what you mentioned is too, is you guys are playing with like kind of color palettes in the presentation. So I think your food too is very, visually aesthetically pleasing too so that's i think it makes it a little bit more inviting especially when people come in again those hesitations for people they're like oh it's a vegetarian place i don't know if that's for me or vegan right i think you guys are like actually alluring those people to kind of dating them in too with the visual presentation it's i mean it's incredibly important to me um as a chef you know like if you're gonna put something in front of someone you know to me like i like we tell our team all the time like Everything that comes out of this kitchen will be set in front of someone. I want the reaction to not just be like, you know, oh, food, but actually like, holy shit. Check this out. Yeah. This is yeah. giant. Or like, oh my God, look at it. Like when people pull out their phones and take a picture of the food, to me, that's like, all right. So like you marked off the first check mark right yeah. there. Like that's memorable. Yeah. Someone actually wants to take a picture of the food. Yeah. 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 But then you obviously want it to taste good, so that they <laughs> yeah. they want it again. So well, that's absolutely it's really important. Sure. Was that that whenever you guys uh, first started? I know it's easy to say uh, we had all these ambitions and, and so on and so forth. Do you guys feel like a lot of those initial goals that you guys set in place 
have come to fruition, or there's things that you're still working on? I, I mean, I, I feel like I, I'm always like waiting over self critical. <laughs> I, I feel like it's me too, man. <laughs> so, which I, you know, I don't think is a bad thing because we, we didn't want to just like pull something off and then walk away from it. You know? Right. Um, it's like music. You know, you don't you don't play music to be like, cool. We wrote six songs and we can play shows for eternity now. Like you, right. you want to grow as a musician. You want to grow as a chef. You want to grow as a restaurant. You want to like keep impressing people and giving them something, you know, new. So, like this is barely scratches the surface. I think of what our goal is. We have pretty high expectations for the future for ourselves. So, I mean. I remember when we were drawing up the business plan at the end of the year, it was like December of 2020, you know, we live across the street from each other, so, you know, during the pandemic, we just like whiskey together and we talk about stupid shit, and, you know, this was one of them, you know, yeah. and it's like, we, we thought, well, you know, it's, you know, it'll be a vegan horror thing place, you know, we'll get... We get this much business, right? You know what I mean? Like, and actually, we were like, holy fuck, like, we got way more business than what we thought we could get, you know? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. suddenly, like, you know, being Froke's Top 100 and A List and, you know, being in the New York Times and we're going to be in that on an A show coming out the end of October. Mm-hmm. I'm cooking a new cooking show. It's like her own restaurant. So, you know, so, like, we didn't expect any of that. We just thought, you know, hey, let's just do this and we had fun, you know? And, um, and so now we're like, all right, so, now what? So that's what we're that's what we're trying to figure out now. It's like what now? Like you know, we have people I think there's an opportunity to expand a lot of growth opportunity and that's what we're looking to do next. Incredible. Yeah, that's totally. always great news. <laughs> um, let's talk about maybe some goals outside of just, you know, expanding and growth opportunities that you guys maybe have that you guys haven't quite achieved. So what are some of those goals? Let's manifest those that you guys have coming up for yourselves. Um, like visually in here, there's I think that there's a lot. Like we were talking this morning, you know, Brian, what he does for his other job, you know, it's like couldn't have asked for that. I mean, aside from him being my brother and like pretty much my best friend, like having someone that creates visual experiences and you know works for theme parks and stuff like that, like. There's a lot. Right. There's a lot we want to do. A lot. Yeah. That's, I, I need I need more money and more time. Oh, and, you know, right. like, like will that like the uh, you know the haunted terror talk of Hill and you know like, yeah. you know the Google windows and all that. You know, that's, That'd be incredible. <laughs> they were like a black church over like yeah, a black church. Yeah. We could find like a Victorian home somewhere like yeah. right now. A nice script like this, like South Grand, where there's already like a big, a lot of food, tra- you know, foot traffic. Yeah, it's a big food scene already. Have a haunted house. I mean, that's that'd be incredible. Though. You know, yeah, that'd be cool. if I have like an unlimited supply of money, <laughs> you know, it's, I always think back. So when we were growing up, we would always go to the beach boardwalk in Santa Cruz, California. And to me, the haunted house ride was just so like, fun. I want to live here. You know, like, the, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. so the older I get, like, how do I make enough money to live yeah. somewhere like this? I yeah. know. I'm going to eat in my basement in my house. I get yeah. put in like a haunted house ride. <laughs> <laughs> but the restaurant is like, you know, it's like the closest, closest thing. We can yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll steal the old Chuck and Cheese ones and uh, yeah. there you go. Right. Right. Yeah. Set them on fire, put them out. Yeah, yeah. 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 they just uh, they just can bust on their own. <laughs> Someone could could pay for the for the rights to open up Five Nights at Freddy's pizza place. Like, oh, can dude. we kill? Yeah, yeah. 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 my boys love that. So yeah, I say yeah. That. yeah. Uh, you alluded to it earlier. Your normal work. Are you kind of in the graphic design? Or, or no, no. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a designer for an architectural firm. We oh, work for nice. Big So, I, I just design thematic. I 
a lot of remodeling and design gotcha. like spaces. So, okay. so and then um, I, I do some on-site art direction and travel here and there. And I, okay. So for construction, so I'll be like construction administration art direction for theme parks. That's so gonna that's be kind of fun for nine to five, if you will. You know, in the sense it that is. they get to see your dreams manifest and come yeah. or yeah, your idea and come to this is, this is like, you know, like Bradley was saying, like, this is the actual manifestation of dreams, right? Or right, like, sure. Right. Um, I do, I, I'm lucky to have a, such a great job, but, you know, uh, oftentimes when I'm there, I'm thinking about here, you know what I mean? Right, like, sure. Like, I, I want to do what I can do there, but I want to do it for this place and, you know, really make this, you know, I already think it's special, but, you know, what we can do and... There's just there's a lot of cool things, you know. You can go a lot of different directions with the chair and talking. So sure. That gets me excited. About it. I mean, this might be just kind of the obvious question, but you feel like those experiences made you more prepared to do this, and oh, yeah. probably less intimidated to do this. As well. Yeah. Again, you know, going back to what we said in the beginning, like this, we stayed right inside of like there's nothing outside of our wheelhouse, you know. So, um, I, I was shockingly surprised at how it's going to sound horrible to say. Because it was not easy opening up the books. There's nothing easy about it. Yeah. But I was shocked with how easy it was to get the aesthetics and the brand nailed down. It was just, it, you know, it was like, looking back, I was like, none of that was the struggle. Like, none of that was hard yeah. for us. It was, it's all the other restaurant business, staffing, payroll, insurance, sure. like all the city licensing exactly. all and stuff. all that crap. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all yeah. that stuff was. But the like coming up with none of this was even brainstorming. It's like we're just gonna throw this over here because it makes sense. And, you know, we did like blood dripping down the walls. That was like one night during her late pulling, you know, setting the place up and I'm painting and I had the black and pink paint. I'm like, and just started dripping it out, like oh, Bradley, come out here. And it was like suddenly we just drip paint on all the walls, like fucking blood, yeah, it's off. Yeah. And it was like easy, right? There was no like thought behind put a lot a lot of was in line putting the sex on. So I think it's yeah, I think a lot of businesses struggle with the things they need to necessarily struggle with. Sure. Like, not every business is only operated by two graphic designers, you know, or artists, yeah. you know, that have these other abilities. You know, like, you know, like putting our website together and work. We saw like, a web design we business. We've we we done all this stuff. So, you know. So there's kind of the same thing like playing playing music in a band. We're like, oh, we don't. A lot of bands are just like, we don't know any artists. Like, I mean, for sure, you know. But like, we were always just like, oh, this, this is what we do. Yeah, you're yeah. a kind of brand new, you know, child. Like you mentioned, yeah. So, yeah. And and on top of that, we both cook Mexican food at home all the time for our families, and we have to do that for every day. Vegan Mexican food is like the mainstay of both of our homes. So, sure. you know, like, again, we didn't have to go very far. It's not like, you know, it just all was kind of already there. We already had the seitan recipes. We already had all this stuff already put together, you know. Yeah. So, just, in a lot of ways, I think we, it made, it's just, this whole thing made sense, you know. Like, why wouldn't yeah. you be? Out of curiosity, is the rest of the family vegan or vegetarian for both of you, or? Um, mostly vegetarian. I say. Yeah. Mostly vegetarian. My wife and I are vegan. My oldest daughter is vegan. And I have two vegetarian and something like two other people. My youngest has never had meat. So she was fully raised. Um, she's cheese now. But, yeah. Uh, and my son, like, actually, my son is technically pescatarian because he, he likes to eat fish when we go out, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, we definitely yeah. don't, you know, we don't, like, push a dietary sure. thing on our, on our kids, you know? Yeah. I mean, my my kids, or my daughter, at least, you know, she, every once in a while, she wants fish, you know? Dad, can you cook this for me? <laughs> No, but we can go out. You know? <laughs> no, somebody else could be yeah, right? It's like it's not gonna happen for me, but I, I don't like make her feel wrong like, well. You know, sure. she's she's well aware that she actually decided at a young age to go vegetarian. Just from yeah. watching like a national geographic show, she just was like sure. it's meat, you know, and right. she kinda like you know, I was happy. Like she made the decision on her own and you know, I don't I just I don't 
feel it's the correct way to go about things. Right. Like, right. Like, if you're, if you push anything from the table, right. they're going to hit the clients and be yeah. like, slot spells. Yeah. 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 I love to hear that. Uh, you know, you, you as a parent, your job, the best job that you can do is just give your kid all the resources to make their own decisions, right? So, and it's, you know, you don't necessarily have to force feed them, especially when you feel like you're raising a low adjusted, you know, person. And, uh, you know, I know that's something that going into even having our daughter, initially our first child, my wife and I, uh, I was a vegetarian at the time. And my wife wasn't, and uh, she asked me what my feelings were, and I'm like, I'm not going to tell her what she can and can't do. I mean, we're kind of hard before the horse. She's a baby. She's going to be breast, milk fed, you know, so it's not really something to worry about right now. So I was always kind of open to it, but, um, you know, again, I, I kind of rested on what I said initially. No. Right. To give her the resources to make her own choices. If you're going to be a parent that's telling them what they have to do constantly, I mean, it's one thing It's like, don't go, go out and be a felon. You know? Right. We're not yeah. talking about that yeah. sort of thing. Right. right? But, it's, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's always good to hear that from uh, kindred spirits out there. That people are kind of bringing their kids up that way, too. Uh, I know, like, it seems silly to have to talk about it, but there's a lot of indoctrination that goes on nowadays, whether that's, you know, politically or it's uh, religiously rooted, whatever the case is. I think if you're... Raising well-adjusted people, they can make those decisions on their own. They can kind of see the evil for what it is, the top right. right, stay away from it. Right. Oh. Try to equip them the best you can to make the right decision for themselves. And then you got to let go. you got to let them live their lives. Right. You know, I'm living, that's, right now, I've got a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old, and they, they're both, you know, they, there's a lot of some things we disagree on, but for the most part, they're amazing people. They're going to make decisions that I don't necessarily agree with. Um, but that's my job is, you know, to give them all the tools that they need to succeed and be good people. I just always say, just be a good human. Just right. Be the best human you can be. Yeah. You know, that's all I care about. So. Out of curiosity, have your kids uh, been drawn to horror or music themselves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're into it. Huh? Not my youngest. Just, you know, he's uh, will be able to well, he's got some time, yeah. He's got some time. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, we just went to Spirit of Halloween the other day. I have a 15 year old daughter, and she just, from a bit of a young age, it's like, you know, blood and guts, like, I'll watch it. Darkness. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and now she's like, she goes to battle shows with us. That's cool. Know, she's like, that's incredible. She'll, she'll be like, why didn't you ever tell me about this band? You know, it's like, she just got the Lamb of God a yeah. couple weeks ago, and she just was like, who else is like them, you know? So I started saying when they were like, they were kind of in that vein, and it's just like, oh my God, this stuff is so good. Um, like, those are ghosts of conscience with us. Awesome. She went to the Mastodon. But showing people, showing people music they don't know and then liking it is like the best reward ever, but oh, it's even more reward when it's your children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I have boys, and they're all hip-hop, and rap, which I like I some it. of that. That's yeah. not bad, but he just no rock. Metal, yeah. most of them. Right, I don't have a problem with it, but yeah. yeah. I took him to the ghost show. I, I brought him to the ghost show a few weeks ago, but um, he, he multiple times he had his camera out. He's like kind of wide eyed, you know, he's 18, yeah. he's like never seen anything like that before. You know, private then, production in blue. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> so then, like, literally on the way home, he was like, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna buy a little yachty tickets. Do you want to go get a little, little yachty? Yeah, I'm like, uh, I don't know when is it. I, I'm actually out of town, so I could go with them, otherwise, I would have totally made that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I think uh, a part of the appeal with goes, I mean, I like the music, but it's you think it's right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but yeah, it's a fun time, you know. There used to be a focus on that. Let's go back and talk about bands like Kiss, Alice Cooper, right? You know? Yeah, that was all production value, sure. right. Yeah. It doesn't take anything away from music. In fact, I think it kind of enhances it. Well, and there, it, it's good music. Like they, right. they got legit musicians. Yeah. Right. right. You know, they're not a gimmick or a joke. They, and their music is really good. Yeah. I, I actually fucking love this. Right? I, mean, I do too. Oh, yeah. Songs are great. So. Yeah. I, I had somebody tell me once that they were kind of like Scooby Doo music. I'm like, what? man, this sounds like Blue Oyster Cult to exactly. me. Exactly. It's, like, it's like a Satanic Blue Oyster Cult. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, so I, I didn't really see that. Uh, you know, 
it's Jay Scooby Doo. I just think of the them running in place, you know, the twisty sound effects. <laughs> you know? uh, but anywho, yeah, another great band. Uh, let's. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about too here is the drinks specifically. You guys have seen us in the footage today, uh, sipping on drinks. If you guys listen to the audio version of the podcast, be sure to check out our social media and uh, see some of the things that we're posting up to enhance our experience here and kind of detail that for you folks. Uh, I ended up getting the margarita flight here, which is absolutely delicious. Josh and I are sharing that right now. Yeah. And uh, you guys got a little bit of everything going on with the margaritas. You guys have kind of the coconut hints and some of what I drink here today. Uh, but then you guys go the spicy route. And I know that some, I mean, that's the place, right? You guys, a lot of spicy ones you guys do. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic drinks, by the way. Yeah, absolutely I, delicious. I encourage yeah. everybody to check stuff out. But uh, if you if you don't like the spicy stuff, let's talk about some of the things that are not so spicy, maybe in the menu too. Yeah, uh, like food wise, I mean, that was a that was a challenge in itself. Uh, you know, opening up in the Midwest for like it's kind of a gamble. Like, right, are right. people going to want the spice or they not? And when we first opened, you know, we definitely. Saw that people were like, we can't eat it. it, can't eat it. Like everything's way too spicy. So we tried to add things on the menu, like the basic witch taco and stuff like that. We're like, hey, this is not, it's not spicy. It's very straightforward. Right. You're uh, like, oh my god, a basic witch is spicy. Like, oh, yeah. 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 Every once in a while, you know, it's like your sour cream is too spicy. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, but it's not very good. Uh, <laughs> they don't say that. It's it's a hard thing to juggle. Right. You know, you want to, I guess, like, as a chef, it's really tough because you, like, you have a vision for your food and you want to put yeah. that out. You know, or, like, music, like, you know what you want to play. You know, right. know what you want to do, you know how you want to perform. And, you know, like, and then if a bunch of people are just like, yeah, I'm just not into it. You know, it's, or can you do it this way? Like, no. <laughs> right, right. But at least with, you know, a menu at a restaurant, you know, it's not like, Right. You have to like, totally change everything you're doing with so We're, we're, we're trying, trying to turn it down. Yeah. We obviously we want we want everyone to love this. Sure. Um, so we really do try to have as diverse of a menu as we can. However, we we made a commitment we're gonna be ourselves from right. the beginning and my brother and I love spicy food and that's just how it is. Like right. my wife can't even eat some of my cooking sometimes, you know, she's like, This is just too why do you do this? I'm like sweating, I'm sorry, like I don't know. So it's just like it's easy for us to just make spice food because right. that's how we, you know, we grew up. Our dad used to make this green chili when we were kids, like a pot of green chili. And it was, I remember just like, oh my god, it's so hot! <laughs> but we love, like, we all ate it. It was like, super good. It was like I remember sitting on the table and everyone's nose was running. And everyone's like, yeah, it's so good, Dad. Like throats are on fire, you know. But that's how I don't know. That's how we all grew. Up. Yeah, I had a similar introduction to spicy stuff. My dad and my uncle used to, as a joke, they'd get like organic jalapenos and have us kids eat them. It's also like where they were pickles or whatever. I knew better, but I honestly didn't care myself. I got acclimated to like spicy stuff at a very young age. But there are people that, you know, it's not their bag, but uh, it's totally fine. And, and yeah. that's fine too. You know, it takes all types, right? Uh, but also getting back into this business and what it is, that's the small business experience. Yeah. Especially with, for two guys like yourselves that are injecting your personality, you know, things that you like, your interests, and uh, hopefully, you know, learning to people. Obviously, you are the place to school right now. Uh, we're here talking to you. Yeah. We're very interested as well. So, uh, you know, that's the small business experience, though. People subscribe to have a unique experience. You know, if you want to chain place, God love you. They're, they're out there, you know. Yeah. But if um, you want a unique experience. But if you want a unique experience. You guys need to come down to check this place out. Yeah. So I know you guys have some beer here too, which we haven't dove into quite yet. What kind of beer do you guys have available on the menu? We well, we've tried to keep it as close to local as possible. Right, it's definitely a big goal of ours. Uh, we're in the right city to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. um, and we, you know, we have the best, the best beer scene. I love our beer scene. Absolutely. We, we really lucked out. Um, you know, we approached Earthbound, one of one of my favorites. Just like, is there any way you would have missed that? And we were like, here before us, and they were just like, hell yeah. That's all. Okay. Yeah. So we have our necrotic glass that, that they made for us. We kind of gave them, you know, a little bit of an idea of kind of what we wanted, and they came up with it. 
It's, I absolutely love it. It's kind of sour and kind of like a, kind of a Baja blast. Yes. Yeah. Sour beer. Kind of okay. Thing. Oh, nice. I'll have to try that before we take off. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. That's our only beer that we have on, on tap right okay. now. So, um, yeah, there's a couple outside of it. More hands or just not at um, in Rockwell. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Bradley said, we try to keep as much local as possible. Um, some of the some of the ones that we do we don't have that are big sellers or like the Montucky. Um, people love that because I've never had that. You no, know, it's like a it's like a deal. Okay. Kind of like kind of like a couple of death tones. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're like, oh my god. I know exactly what you're talking about. I haven't tried yeah. it yet, but whenever I was up in the city foundry, I saw it and I thought that's what it was too. I was like, is that the Death Tones beer? Like, no, that's... actually, I bought that beer at a Death Tones show. And I was like, oh shit, they have their own beer here. And yeah. I bought it, and I'm like, wait a minute. It's just like a, it's like a, I don't know, typical <laughs> Budweiser style ale. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Huh. Yeah. Try that one. Well, as the conversation's winding down today, and I appreciate your gentleman's time. I know it's busy in here and it's probably got some demands so you're going to meet as soon as we get done talking here today. Uh, I just wanted to end with a couple more questions for you guys just to get to know you guys a little bit better. Uh, let's talk like horror nostalgia pieces. I don't know if you guys are like collectors of memorabilia. I know there's a little bit of some stuff here. Uh, what is like a holy grail horror memorabilia thing for maybe you? Even if you're not a collector, it's something you'd like to have. How about for yourself? Memorability. <laughs> what well, we got me there? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of what I would want. I, I, I am a toy collector already. Um, not, not a whole lot of horror. I mean, most of the horror stuff is obviously right. Lots of games. Yeah. Predator stuff like that. I know. For me, it's you know it was you know, for, oh yeah, that's a classic. Yeah, I mean, I love it. You know, it's got Snake talk. Mountain, the Castle Grayskull. Yeah, yeah. Art. And I, I've got like a big, big set in all my pocket this Sunday. Feature here somewhere. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know about horror memorabilia. That's that's a tough one. I would die to get my hands on an original Geiger print of some sort. Yeah. Um. Something like that, or or uh, just the art in, in the Alien franchise is just so awesome. Oh yeah, like anything from any of those movies, I would I would love to have. It's like yeah. you know, or or like another thing I would I I think would be really fun is like anything from the Predator franchise too. So sure, I think because again, really great design and fun art. Uh, you know, design some of that. I don't know. I didn't see like a like like a full scale xenomorph. That it was, I mean, it was like, I'll never be able to pull it <laughs> Right, right. Why? I don't even know where we would put it. But I mean, yeah. Get the Queen Man in here. That'd be a serious feature. For sure. Uh, I know, like, when the AI boom, uh, art boom first started, um, I was, like, really into, like, I think the two perfect worlds meshing together. You could get, like, HR Geiger art direction mixed with Hellraiser. And mm -hmm. like somehow incorporate those together a little bit more, maybe a little steam on the machine more so. It would be like that's just an untapped thing that's happened. So I actually did some AI art stuff with collaborated with AI to make some some of that stuff. And uh it actually came out pretty decently. <laughs> I, I was, I was part of the By the way, that that's another really great movie. I thought that the new Hellraiser movie was super fun. Yeah. I was all right. It. Yeah, you watched it, right? I, I liked it and I know a lot of I, I thought it was super I love the director. David yeah. Bruckner, like he's a, right. he's a really yeah. good director, uh, and I was excited to see what he would do with it. I saw, I think the movie he did right before that was Nighthouse. Yeah, have you guys seen that? Yeah, I thought yeah. Nighthouse was good too. I thought it was really good. Um, the payoff at the very end got a little squirrely, but it was still overall a good movie. But what what, it, what drew me to it, and I was like, okay, I can see the whole razor thing. There's like a boat sequence where she goes out and you're like wondering, is she dreaming or is this actually happening? Right, right. And you can hear that voice of her husband. It's got kind of that. Uh, baritone layer added to it, the vocal effect, and I was like, I gotta see this because I could just see that as like right. you know being used with the Cenobite or like uh, I guess it was the the uh, the priestess instead in that one. But uh, I was like, I'm, I'm curious to see if he implements that. And again, the aesthetic in that scene too, it's kind of like a blood red 
or yeah. LA too. I and I think that might be the reason why I, I thought that was a beautiful movie. Like it was beautiful and like yes. I, the color, the costume, like the whole thing was like really well done. I yeah, mean, I was super into it. Yeah, and he's also done shorts on like the VHS uh, movies that have come out recently yeah. too. Um, they're getting ready to do VHS 1985, which I'm stoked for because it's got oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, it's got that VHS kind of um, the the framing. I think it's four three, so yeah. it's like old film, older film. Um, and then they, I think they probably just did an effect on it, and they got like kind of the VHS scroll and reel feel, you know, to it as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's going to be a Shutter exclusive. It's kind of the last re- couple of releases have been Shutter exclusives. I think since '99. I want to say. So, yeah. So, about that one, too. Disney picked up the old thing from what else was the top app. Yeah. Like, like, you know, the younger, younger people need the alien, you know, kind of a thing. So, it's a lot of, you know. Yeah, there's a couple different alien things in development. Uh, I know, hey, is it, I forget his first name, Alvarez, I want to say it's his last name, the guy who did the original Don't Speak and the Evil Dead remake. He's got a, Alien, uh, I think it's a series coming out on HBO Max here, and it might be this year. It might have got pushed because of the writer strike next year, which I'm like really excited about. But there's like weird, like multiple developments going on like that. Like, and I think the other development is the one that you're talking about. Um, and I think they're trying to utilize like Hulu now because they're all kind of like partners, but all like a part of the same corporate umbrella anymore to do like the darker releases, right? Like Hellraiser was. Right. Right. Example of that was a group exclusive. So. Wrong what they offer. Yeah. I think that was mostly uh, what they're trying to do. Sure. You know what I mean, I mean, all of that is about IP nowadays. It's like who owns the intellectual right. property and no license it out. So right. To do stuff yeah. more more chances than not. So, right. yeah, kind of curious to see how where that goes too. Oh yeah. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure talking with you today. We can't thank you enough for your time. You What's the best place for people to stay in tune with everything you guys got going on? Uh huh. I, I think our Instagram is probably <laughs> first place to start. Yeah. Um, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I mean, that's our most of our, our everything we advertise is usually done through the people here. Just come on in here and ask what's going on. Yeah, guys, good. come down here and check out this location. What do we do? Yeah. The street's beautiful. The restaurant's beautiful. Great people. Great atmosphere. I love it. We, we do have trivia night starting back up in October. So it'll be the third Thursday of every month starting in October. We're gonna okay. Be on the trivia. Very cool. Are you guys hosting that yourselves or are you guys using somebody else? We've got someone else coming in. Okay. Super excited. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And I know you guys do other things outside of just the skull and bones of the place, if you will. Uh, you guys do catering too, right? And pop up events too. So. If you guys are interested in those services, be sure to reach out to these gentlemen here at Terra Tacos in St. Louis. We've enjoyed our time here, and thank you guys for the time. Yes, yeah, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Yes, thank you. Hello, everybody. We're back live with you. We appreciate you sticking around after the break. We just had an awesome conversation with both Brian and Bradley of Terra Tacos. Yeah, great dudes, man. Awesome dudes, awesome establishment. We can't speak to it enough, but we are going to speak to it a little bit more. And that's the fact that we just actually had some food here today. Uh, so this was my second experience. I know your first I'm experience. Very, yeah, first. Yeah. Uh, so how was it for you? It was really good. Like, you know me, I'm not a vegetarian. I'm, I'm pretty picky. Right. Pretty vegan. I like, I don't do the vegan stuff, vegetarian stuff. But, I, right. you know, dude, holy shit. I was really yeah. surprised, man. I got the, what was it called? The... Uh, the Carnage Asada. Carne Asada tacos? Yeah, but I think it had like but a special a name. Seitan. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, delicious. I couldn't even tell that it was vegetarian. Like, yeah. It was uh, had a really nice smoky flavor. It tastes like meat. I mean, it was great. Certainly enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of a part of the niche here is the fact that they appeal to and try to appeal to uh, non-vegetarians, non-vegans, in your case. Probably came in with some skepticism as to whether or not you'd like right. it. Yeah. Right? I like, but you, like put a moment I like. Fake, right. uh, fake stuff usually has an acquired taste. So sure. you know, most people that are not are probably going to be a little right. apprehensive. Right. Don't be. This place is fantastic. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was vegetarian, vegan for some amount of time, so I kind of knew what to expect as far as I was concerned. I'd already had some of these guys' food previously. I, I mainly had the tacos previously, so I went the burrito route this time. And I got the, what was it? The, the Hatch Slinging Slasher. Yeah, the Hatch Slinging Slasher Burrito. 
had uh, a couple different types of jalapenos, I think, poblano peppers. Uh, it had pinto beans in it, which I'm mean, yeah, kind of like beans in my Mexican food typically. So it's a little bit more filling, satisfying. A layer of rice in there, uh, so guacamole, yeah. uh, cilantro. You know, I'm a, I like cilantro. So. You got chips and guac too. I got chips and guac. You got chips, chips and salsa, salsa, right? The, the house salsa so, is fantastic too. The guac was fantastic too. I liked it. I mean, I like my guac guac to have a little bit of a kick to it. Uh, it still had the cilantro taste to, to, to it, but it had a little bit of a kick to it. But I don't think it was like overpowering. I know that these guys sometimes get some feedback that they're Food's a little too spicy or whatever the case is, but uh, I'm probably not the best person to ask. He'd be better in this situation, but, uh, you know, I love very spicy stuff. I've done things like the one chip challenge and right. yeah. all that, you know, all the hot ones, you know, hot sauces I have in my house. The last dab sauce I like, I put like 10 dabs of that on a slice of pizza. So. Yeah, I'm not right to that level. I guess I would probably be more on the normal spectrum of spiciness stuff. Like, yeah. I like spicy stuff, but I can't handle a lot of that. But yeah, but you're kind of in that mid range. You like jalapeno, yeah. if you like yep. buffalo sauce. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, my, my taco was not like overly spicy. It had a good amount of spice to it. Just yeah. So, yeah, no complaints there for me. Yeah, it was really incredible. Uh, we talked about the, I guess, margarita flight, the frights, as they call it here. Yeah. Uh, they do taco frights also, so like, can't recommend people enough to do the taco frights too. Uh, we didn't grab those, but we did see them coming to people's plates. Uh, I wasn't like extremely hungry myself, uh, but one thing that we did take notice note of here, and I want to highlight this, is the prices. Oh, dude. I feel like for a St. Louis establishment, especially being niche, kind of right, yeah, fantastic prices. These guys are very reasonable right. prices. Very reasonable for the time, too. Like, like, this stuff is outrageous right now, and this is affordable. This is affordable food, and it's sure. good, and it's made by these people back here. You know what I mean? You yeah. can't get better. Yeah, you're not getting a bunch of, like, store-bought ingredients that right. they're slapping together. You know, they use local. Things are made fresh. It's their own recipes. Um, I mean, I'm looking at some it. of these price points. I mean, you're talking $5 oh, you know, for a couple tacos, maybe seven, eight dollars for a couple tacos, depending on what you get. That's not bad at all. Absolutely. Kids' meals are under five bucks. There are versions of versions of contraps, which are way more filling, satisfying, larger, yeah, with better ingredients than what you're going to get. Like, again, we mentioned it earlier, like a, like a place like Taco Bell. Uh, you know, twelve dollars and some change. So, I mean, right now too, the food service industry is getting hit just as hard as anybody with inflation. And these guys got great prices. We were talking to before we started recording again. It's like, you can't get, you can't go on a date anymore. So, you know, that's usually paying for two, you and your wife, you and your girlfriend, your gal, whoever. Right. You know, whatever your situation is, your partner. You can't go out, and, like, in St. Louis specifically and spend, you know, less than $50. You can here. Uh, I think it was like $35 for both of what we got. And we got sides. So, you cannot beat that price. And... If you're just like looking for a good time, something different, uh, a little bit of a di different atmosphere, this is the place to be for sure. Yeah, it'll definitely leave a lasting impression. The, the aesthetic and the vibe alone, you'll never forget, but the food is just as big. Well, and the drinks. So they have everything here. So come yeah. check it out. You know what I mean? They got a little bit of everything, man. I, and this is a place too. Like if you just want to get drinks, like you could do that here. And right. it, you know, not be out of the norm. Like we've literally just been sitting here kind of bullshit until we ate and just sitting here at the storefront, just shooting the shit with these guys and drinking. It's been so much fun. So absolutely. And, and again, kind of taking in the decor, the interior decorations and that sort of thing. We grabbed a few pictures while we were eating. Uh, we're going to get a few more before we get out of here, but be sure to check out our social media or maybe you're listening to this in retrospect. And so now you can recall those things that we posted and check for this place out man. like price points are on key. Atmospheres on key, service is great too. Can't hospitality. I mean, we can talk a little bit more about that too. Is the hospitality? Yeah, the, um, these two brothers are they're, they're really great guys. So they're doing something special. Not, we, we appreciate it. Yeah, not just Brian and Bradley, but the people that they have working for them. Uh, we can tell that you know they made these staffing selections with that in mind. Great hospitality. A young lady I didn't catch her name serving us, as well as a young man serving us here too. Both fantastic. Great hospitality, great personalities, very friendly, uh, very warming and welcoming. And I've been watching them interact with the other staff, or excuse me, other customers here. 
And uh, I think everybody's having kind of the same experience there too, right? Yeah, I think everybody's enjoying themselves. Looks like it's a pretty good time back there. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's packed out in here. We've been here for what two, three hours now. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. uh, they've packed this place out probably about four or five different runs. Yeah. It seems like as soon as they catch their breath, they're getting busy again. So this is a great location here out in South Grand in St. Louis, an area that's kind of been revitalized, still revitalizing, rehabbing some. Um, a lot of culture. There's constantly people walking up and down the street. Um, you know, couldn't be in a better location, couldn't be a better atmosphere. Right, and I think you hit on something very important. I kind of talked about it a couple of times throughout the podcast. It's just how, how many different melting pots of different cultures, how many a melting pot of different cultures there is. For sure. I mean, you can walk up and down the street and see you know, whole food stores from one culture, and then you go to a restaurant right. and see food from a completely different, you know what I mean? So it's just like a giant melting pot. Of Next door I to one that. another is a Mediterranean market to highlight this, and then a Chinese barbecue. Right, yeah, right next to each other. I mean, you it's know? great. Yeah. And then across the street is a, a world market. So, like, just a, a lot of stuff, a lot of opportunities, pizza place across from us. So if you're with a crowd and people are hesitant to come here to Terra Taco, maybe you can... Tell them to stop being such babies and just eat here. Or uh, if you can't win them over, uh, kick their ass across the street and tell them they got to get their drinks in. Right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. So we can't thank the folks here at Terra Taco enough for the awesome time that we've had today. Uh, we'll wrap things out by talking about what we have coming up here on the podcast, of course. So next week we're going to be talking with a guy that has become quite a St. Louis institution and name himself. Shane from Rock Paper Podcast. So we're yeah. going to be doing kind of a crossover of podcasts here. That'd be cool. Um, Shane is a guy early on that reached out to us and uh, offered his services and was very complimentary of what we were doing right out the gate. And a guy that we, I kind of followed uh, somewhat up to that. And what I took note of with Shane specifically was the melting pot of guests that he has on the show. And there's a, definitely a big focus of music, but he's had things like comedians and things on his show before, too. Uh, Marcus Newstead, been a guest on the show multiple times, multiple bands uh, here in St. Louis. He's been a guest on the show there, too. We kind of got on a side tangent on his first episode that he appeared on the podcast about you know, what Shane does with his show. And what I like about him is he almost has kind of the, I guess we'll call it kind of like the late night feel in the sense that. Not only does he do the interview, but there's a lot of like live performances that happens on his podcast with people, and uh, I really enjoy that piece. You know, it's something that I wish we had more time to dedicate and deal with our own show, right. but um, but that's his thing, and and it's awesome. And I can't tip my cap enough to him. Another awesome thing that he does is local show calendars. So he actually puts up weekly what's going on in St. Louis. So regardless of what type of music you're in, he's got he's narrowing in on various things. There's things like country. There's things like bluegrass that he reports on. There's things like, you know, uh, rap, R&B, rock, classic rock, blues. I mean, he's highlighting multiple genres. And again, I think we're going to find a lot of similarities between us and him right. in the sense that we have a wide array of taste of music. We have a wide array of guests on our show. And uh, he's shown us a lot of St. Louis love in particular. And that's, you know, something that we're always trying to promote and uplift the St. Louis artists and people doing their thing. So going to be a little crap plus platform love. We'll be on his show eventually too. So talking with him and, and uh, what we do and why we do what we do to hopefully garner some new audience members too. So yeah, I look forward to speaking with Shane and picking his brain and see how he operates with those things. So that'd be my first time speaking with him. So yeah, it'd be cool to see how he does the, the old odd business. Yeah. And I mean, everybody does the business a little bit differently than one another too. So, We'll, we'll get into some back-of-the-house talk in the sense that, you know, what kind of stuff do you use? Because I think it is important to have those conversations occasionally on a podcast because I feel like we might be out there purposely or unpurposely inspiring people to do the same. Right. Yeah. And uh, people need to know what those launch points are for pursuit and uh, just little tips of the cap that we can give people. Uh, but one thing I'm really going to be interested in talking to him about is just the creative process in general. Uh, you know, what, what thought goes into when he's preparing for a show uh, just out of outside of the mundane, like where were you born? Where did you grow up? You know, right. Right. You know, those types of questions that you're asking. It, it, everybody. It's not easy, man. Like, especially if you want to stand out and be different than a sure. normal, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So always having fun talking about the craft, home on the craft. We'll do that with Shane next week. So 
as you guys know, we've got a lot going on. Stay in tune with us on social media. Follow Terra Taco on Instagram and Facebook. I know they have a Twitter, too. Uh, we didn't mention food. that on the call. Come eat some food here. Uh, stay up to date with what they got going on. They also do pop-ups at events and locations. So like what we talked about earlier with our interview, they were at the St. Louis Punk Rock Flea Market. And that's when we got our opportunity to initially try some of their stuff. And, uh, you know, so if you're like trying to do two birds, one stone, you want to go out to an event, see if these guys are at it, follow them on social media. They'll keep you abreast of the situation. Come here and you like it. You think I got a catering opportunity for these guys. Hit them up. They do it all. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitch, of course. To catch the live streams. Turn on those notifications. You can find us on TikTok as well as Twitter, too. We stay up to date there as well. So we appreciate the support as always. And for this week, that's all we got. And we are out of time. So good night and good luck. And stay safe at the world. This is Barrett from the ATI Podcast. Each week, Josh and I discuss current events, pop culture, music, TV, movies, politics, sports. Nothing is out of bounds. You can also tune in to learn about rising artists, small businesses, whether it's music, graphic design, filmmaking, or even a brick-and-mortar mom-and-pop shop. We'll be spotlighting folks and their endeavors. Listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Anchor, or anywhere you enjoy your podcast. Just search ATI Podcast. We would like to thank you for your continued support. And as always, please stay safe out there. Hey, this is Josh from ATI Podcast. For show updates and news about the podcast, follow us on social media. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ATI Podcast 22, on Twitter at podcast underscore ATI, on Instagram at the ATI Podcast, on TikTok at ATI Podcast. DMs are always welcome. Have a question for the show? You can always email us at ATI Podcast Questions at gmail.com. Stay safe out there.